So, hello internet, if you're watching on YouTube. This is round three of my uh, Players' Cup 4 run. And, um, la oh, no. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now, you know, okay, I lost round one against a good player. Fine. I won game, I, I won round two pretty convincingly. Uh, pretty, if I can talk, pretty convincingly. I was pretty happy with that. Now, I thought if there was anything that was an auto loss for this team, it was in Didi and Hatterin. Count for me, chat. How many Pokemon on my team resist Psychic? Please point out to me, chat, how I can stop him getting Trick Room up. I can't. This is an auto loss. This is literally an auto loss. And so at this point, I'm thinking, well, okay, you know, fine. You know, I'm 1-2. I was hoping I wouldn't come across a team like this, but here we are, you know. Can't blame my opponent for using a team like this because it's fairly common. Um, it's my my downfall, my problem that I didn't <laughs> build a team that could handle something like this. So I'm thinking, okay, what can we do? And because this Amoongus is faster as well, it doesn't survive um, an Indeedee's expanding force if they are modest max um, special attack. This one was a focus sash on the Indeedee as well. So I'm thinking, well, it probably is max special attack then since this sash. So what can I do here? Obviously, I can't spore the Hatterene because um, because of the uh, the magic bounce. And so I decide to lead with Amoongus and Zapdos. And I'm thinking, okay, I see on I, I see on the team sheet that his Hatterene is Life Orb, which I'm imagining means it's just 252, 252. And if it is just 252, 252, Life Orb, Zapdos, Airstream does one-shot it. So I'm thinking, okay, this is a start. I can go for an Airstream into the Hatterene. That forces him to go for a follow me. If he goes for a follow me, he's not going for an expanding force. And I can spore the ha I can spore the uh, the Indeedee. The downside is that he will get Trick Room off there. And I've got two Pokemon here, weak to Psychic. He's in Psychic Terrain. His Hatterene is Life Orbed. It will once you're everything. Th th there's just no way to win the game, is there? <laughs> there's no way to win the game. Uh, it is literally an auto loss. So uh, let let's see. I mean, I'm playing it out, aren't I? So let's let's see. Stick with me, because this actually is one of the more remarkable sets you'll ever see. But it is an auto loss. <laughs> I'm ju I'm just throwing that out there. It is an auto loss. Okay, so he does go for the follow me. I was kind of hoping he was going to be cheeky and maybe not follow me and then I'd get the knockout on the Hatter. And I'm just trying to clutch at straws here because it's an auto loss. Okay, so fine. He goes for the follow me. Um, my Amoongus, I'm presuming, is now faster than both of these Pokemon. The Indeed, he goes to sleep. The Indeed, he can't wake up next turn. Because it's taken its, um, well, it hasn't taken any turns to sleep here. And he does go for the trick room there. So, now, th this is just worst case scenario, isn't it? I mean, it's only got one active slot. But it's an active slot that can, well, can definitely one-shot my Amoongus. Um, does an expanding force, I mean, this is what I have to hope for. I have to hope that an expanding force doesn't one-shot my Dynamax Zapdos from pretty much full here. And that is what I'm going for. I have to hope that expanding force doesn't, just doesn't, Knocks that dose out. I'm hoping that... Well, I've gone for the Rage Powder there, haven't I? Because um, Amoongus is doing nothing otherwise. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, well, okay, if he does Dynamax the um, the Hatterene, at least I can Rage Powder one move away. What I could have done here is maybe go for a Double Protect, a Protect and a Detect to um, stall out one of these turns of Trick Room. You would expect Max Smite. I don't. I don't think there's any way he would Max Smite here, surely, because I can always just go for a Rage Powder, and um, he needs to start getting knockouts since he's only got limited turns to Trick Room. So here's my Rage Powder. Here's the Mind Storm. Moons is gone. Indeed, he can't wake up. 
There's the life orb. And we are going to get a good hit into this Hatterene. And we can see here the damage. Yeah, that is confirmation that um, an airstream into a non-Dynamax Hatterene would, would actually one-shot it. It would deny in the Trick Room if we got that off. But, you know, okay, he's knocked out the Amoongus. Um, maybe I should have gone for the double protect there, but that would have given him like an extra turn to try and wake up with his Ndidi. Um, but yeah, I mean, Max Might is always tempting, isn't it? But, okay, so, fine. I mean, I've got, I've got some damage into the Hatterene here. He did, like, my, my worst fear, actually, was that he didn't Dynamax the Hatterene. Because Expanding Force literally would have just gone through my team. But he has, and we are in this position now. And Hatterene is threatening both of my Pokemon. So I have to essentially guess, and I guess correctly. I have to guess which one of these is going to target, and I miss the play rough. And he wakes up with his Indeedee. If I had any chance to come back into this game, that was probably it. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage to the Azumarill there, at least. But <sighs> play rough wouldn't have knocked the Hatterene out there, but it would have come very close. I couldn't believe, I mean, well, I could believe because it's player off, but I mean, come on. I really wanted to have some chance in this game, but okay, whatever. He's only got, how many, what, one more turn to Trick Room left here? My Zapdos has just protected. My Zoomerall has just attacked. And he's only got one more turn of his Dynamax here, but well, his Gigantamax left here as well, too. Really, like, if I've got any chance in this game, it is because he did Gigantamax his Hatterene. He should have just expanding forced all over me. So I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to win this game, I need my Zapdos because I think he had some things weak to Zapdos on his team preview. He does go for the Smite, which was into the Zapdos. So I'm bringing Colossal in here. Um, it's kind of a sacrificial swap in a way. Um, he gets a critical hit as well. Man, if... if if I was going to have any chance here. Azumarill actually is faster than the Indeedee in Trick Room. So there's a play rough. Doesn't knock the Hatterene out. Um, here's the Expanding Force, which hopefully, I think I'm hoping at this point, does knock the Colossal out. Yeah, it does. Um, like, if I'd hit that last play rough on the Hatterene, the Hatterene would have been gone now. Azumarill, because I've not belly drummed, you know, is using its Citrus Berry in, in a traditional way of, uh, you know, eating it from taking damage from the opponent. But I believe this is the last turn of Trick Room now, isn't it? Or is Trick Room over? Either way, if this is the last turn of Trick Room, I can just, I can just double protect. It, the, yeah, I, I'm remembering this now. This is the last turn of Trick Room. So I can just go for a safe double, double protect, can't I? Protect, detect. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Because then the next turn, I can... I think this is the last turn of Psychic Terrain as well. So the next turn, I can just Aqua Jet and, you know, Brave Bird or whatever. Or Brave Bird and Player Off, whatever I want to do. But he calls this very nicely, actually. And it's another Trick Room Setter in the back. Another Trick Room Setter in the back. Just get an Attack Raise. Because um, on... Three and a half of my Pokemon on this team, I did make sure that my special offense was uh, higher than my defense, so that Porygon 2 don't get the special attack boost. But yeah, he calls this very nicely. Although, I don't really have much of an option, do I? He's still got the Indeedee there going for the Expanding Force in Terrain. Um, but, but, okay. I mean, Trick Room is over now. Are we in this game still? Because Trick Room's over. Psychic Terrain is over. I can Aqua Jet to knock out this Indeedee. A close combat isn't going to knock the Porygon 2 out. So I've got, I have actually got Taunt on this um, Zapdos. I think if I go for a close combat and it, it won't knock it out. You know, I'll get the um, special offense drop as well. I don't hit myself in confusion, which is good. I, I absolutely needed to not hit myself in confusion there. And I do taunt the Porygon 2 there. I think he was hoping to survive the Aqua Jet there, because he does go for the Trick Room here. But it, it looks like we're in a reasonable position. He could have Venusaur, he could have Torkoal. Torkoal would be a bit of a threat, wouldn't it, I think, still. 
but he actually brings the Hatterene in, which is a it's a strange choice. Um, again, there's no psychic terrain, so you know I I I can go for an Aqua Jet if I want instead of risking the uh, ninety percent accuracy of play rough, which has already missed once in this game. Looks like I'm going to go for the Aqua Jet there, and yeah, I'm going for the yeah I'm going for the the close combat because yeah I'm going to be lowering my special offense, but Brave Bird would as well as the life of recoil getting me quite a lot of recoil as well there yeah it, it, it is a bit odd isn't it because he did know i had taunt and there we go there's a close combat damage which is in range of um play rough at least but yeah his try attack i think try attack was maybe his only attacking move he definitely didn't have ice beam else he would have gone for it there wouldn't he But if I had close combat at last turn, um, I could have just close combat there as well too. But yeah, maybe I, I was confused. That is right. I was confused with the Azumarill. So maybe he was hoping I'd hit myself there. But I'm thinking, you know, does a close combat one-shot Glastria? I'm not really sure. But I, I, it's always safe just to close combat it, obviously. And um, play her off the, the Porygon. Because as long as I, you know, get good damage off into the Glastria... As long as I hit my play rough into the Porygon 2. He can't knock out both my Pokemon with his Glastria. So, it actually looks like we might have pulled something around here. Let's see how this works out, though. Okay, here's my close combat. I am life or boosted. And it one-shots the Glastria. And, yeah, he's taunted. If I miss this play rough... And he knocks out my Zapdos. I still get another chance to hit the player off. That's the worst case scenario. And we miss the player off. Now at this point, I'm scared. That's the second player off in this game I've missed. His taunt has worn off. If I miss this player off, he will recover. He will win the game. It's out of Aqua Jet range. I need to hit this player off. From an auto loss to a situation where I've missed another player off. Oh, but I hit this one. Blooming heck. <laughs> you bet it'll miss. <laughs> I'm very glad it didn't miss. I cannot believe that game. I cannot believe this game. Wow. And... I believe me, you want to stick around for game two because it's even even more ridiculous than that first game. Because I'm remembering it now. Yeah. Hello. Hello, David. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm still thinking at this point, it's an auto loss. He will recognize this mistake. Game one, he won't Dynamax or Gigantamax, whatever. He won't Gigantamax his Hatterene. He'll just go for an expanding force. And and win. And even if he doesn't, even if he does Gigantamax the uh, the Hatterene again, you know, maybe I'll hit myself in confusion. Maybe, you know, maybe he will attack into the Azumarill instead of, you know, my Colossal Sacrificial Switch in or, you know, whatever. There's so many things that could have gone wrong in that first game that, that didn't <laughs> for me to pull some miraculous way out. Like... You know, please, if you've got any ideas how how I can have a, a, a chance against an Indeedy Hatterene lead with this team, please let me know. I mean, if I led Dragapult Colossal, went for Surf Heatwave, um, that wouldn't knock the Hatterene out. You know, if I sat in there with Azumarill and... Like, if I led... I was thinking, like, if I led Raichu Azumarill and Dynamax the Raichu, went for Max Lightning and Belly Drummed the Azumarill then I would get rid of the, the psychic terrain and, you know, so his expanding forces would do less and, um, you know, I would be able to aqua jet some things. Like, that was legitimately something I was considering, leading Raichu as well, Dynamaxing the, the Raichu and then trying to aqua jet. Um, but he has got a Torkoal, hasn't he? He did have it on the team preview there. So, like, if he brought the Torkoal, it just shuts me down. But uh, anyway, and it's nice to see you back here as well, too. It's nice. It is nice to see familiar names. Hello, Nathan. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so, you know, I, I was hoping that 
he would think, oh, I lost the first game leading like that. I'll maybe lead something differently. I don't have any better options. I'm curious, actually, how a Dynamax Raichu and Belly Drum Azumarill lead with a Gon, to be honest. Um, but um, anyway, I'm thinking this is probably my best way. Like, because, again, Max Airstream does one-shot Hatterene. It does force him to go for Follow Me with the Ndidi. And something's falling over over there. And um, and going for the you know, going for the Follow Me, I get to put it to sleep and blah, 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 blah. Uh, another thing that could go wrong for us this game that go, went reasonably right for us last game was the Ndidi, I think, didn't get a first turn wake as well. The Ndidi can always wake up earlier. So, um, you know, let's see how this game goes. I mean, I'm still thinking, well, you know, it's an auto loss. We've lost the game. Team matchup. Moan, 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 complain. Well, actually, I wouldn't complain because I know the team's weak to this stuff and uh, it's my own fault. So, okay, he does go for the follow me again. Again, I was hoping that he would maybe get a bit cheeky, maybe not go for the follow me. Um, but he does. Puts it back into Aqua Jet range. Um, as it was in the last game. Put it to sleep. Yeah, exactly the same as... Um, exactly the same turn one as... As the last battle. And, okay, so I'm thinking... Alright, well, he Dynamaxed the Hattery in last game. If I've got any chance to win this game, it is... Oh, I am. I am. If I've got any chance to win the game, it's him Dynamaxing the Hatterene again. So I did actually mention it, didn't I? In the last game, I did I did think to myself just then, um, you know, watching this back, the turn one of of Trick Room, I could have gone for a Protect and Detect to stall out a turn in Trick Room. That's what I am doing now. But as I had previously said, you know, doing that does give the Hatterene another turn to, uh, to try and wake up. Uh, they can't wake the uh, Indeedy, rather. The Indeedy can't wake up this turn because it hasn't used any of its turns as well. But I'm seeing, okay... Like, I've never been, well, I mean, happy is a, maybe not the right word, but I've never been, I've never thought I might have a chance here uh, as much at the sight of a Gigantamax as I did here, because I thought, he's not going for Expanding Forces. I couldn't explain why he's not just going for Expanding Forces. But, because, like, even if, even if an Expanding Force doesn't one-shot my... Zapdos, it does my Amoongus, and I need two airstreams to, to knock out the Hattery in there. But, you know, we have successfully wasted one of his turns to Trick Room here. And now, just like the first turn of Trick Room in the last game, this is the second turn of Trick Room, we're doing the same... Oh, are we, are we doing the same thing? No, I think I'm just checking what I have in the back. Yeah, surely we do the same thing. We just go for the Rage Powder, because, you know, he, he has to go for the... Uh, the um, Mindstorm, and, um, you know, if he doesn't wake up with the Ndidi, I can get, you know, half, a good chunk of half into his uh, Hattering with the Airstream. So, here we go. Yep, Amoongus goes down. Focus Ash on the Amoongus might be a little bit more of a help here, actually. Although, maybe not, because, I, I you know, you, let's say you're expanding forces, I can't put it to sleep, can I? Because, because, um... <sighs> Because of the thingy. And uh, I think, yeah, that was the Indeedy getting a first turn wake as well there. Yeah, I only need one airstream to knock out the Hatterene if they don't Dynamax. Yeah, exactly. But uh, and that's what I'm saying because um, that forces him to go for the um, the follow me turn one. Because if you don't follow me, I'm knocking him out. Um, but the Indeedy woke up there. I'm thinking, well, all right, fair enough. Game three then. You know, the rolls didn't go for us in this game. Um, I am bringing the Azumarill in just like I did in the first game. He's got one more turn of Gigantamax. Mine has just finished. But this time, the Ndidi is awake. Which is bad. Which, which it, it's over, isn't it? So, okay, you know, if I've got any chance, I'll protect the Azumarill. And then... Maybe, uh... Oh, I'm going for the Sacrificial Colossal Swap again. Okay, I'm playing this exactly as I did game one. <laughs> Where there's a, that is exactly right. Where there's a double protect, there's a way. Um, 
And you have got to play to your outs, haven't you? But I'm thinking, even though my Zapdos is low, I'm thinking, I think at this point, I'm thinking that uh, my Zapdos is more, because let's say he's got Porygon 2 again in the back. Uh, my Zapdos, even though it's low, is more useful than um, my Colossal at full HP. I don't know why I protected the Indeedy there. Um, but I protect, yes, yeah, so at this point my, my thought was that it's just going to go for an attack and an expanding force. Um, it will knock out my Colossal, I'll get my Zapdos back in, and if I've got any chance to win the game, I will get a, a double protect, you know, scraping the barrel here. If I've got any chance to win here, I, I get a double protect with the, um, with the Azumarill, and my Zapdos just detects on the last turn of Trick Room. And then we're kind of in the same position again, but my Zapdos has taken a lot of damage because he indeed he's woken up a lot early this time. So, you know, we can't one shot to the Porygon 2, so the game's over, isn't it? So this is the last turn of Trick Room and the last turn of Psychic Terrain, at least. So I am trying to double protect my Azumarill here, and I think I do protect the Colossal here um, because I'm thinking, well, if the Azumarill fails to double protect, then... Um, at least I'll have both Colossal and Zapdos, and both Colossal and Zapdos is better than just Zapdos. So I do protect the uh, Colossal here. I do try and double protect the Azumarill. If I've got any chance, it's double protecting this Azumarill. And we've got the confusion on top as well, so it's not going to happen, is it? Oh, what's that? It happens. It happens. Colossal doesn't, though. And actually, because we did... This is so amazing because we did get the double protect through the confusion. It is better for us. The Col I think anyway, it's better for us that Colossal is knocked out here. So that confusion hit with Colossal actually helped us because now I get a free swap back into Zapdos and Porygon 2, whatever. I'm threatening more again. Uh, you mean... Um you think the logic for Dynamaxing instead of x Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I suppose so, because if I do, if I do um, survive the Expanding Force, then yeah, I do just knock out the, um, the Hattery in there. You are, you are entirely correct there, yeah. But Trick Room's over. And now, I, I was really frustrated as soon as I put these moves in, because I thought I didn't have to do that. Because... I know I could just... I went for the I went for the Aqua Jet. I went for the same play as I did the last game. And then my Zapdos is faster than the Hatterene. I can go for a close combat into that slot. And I can go for a play rough into the Hatterene, which, assuming it hits, um, covers any kind of switches. If I I was so annoyed with myself here because from an auto-loss game to have a chance in the game, I really threw this away by doing this. I made those moves. I didn't have to Aqua Jet there. I made those moves way too quick. Okay, yeah, you know, I get the 100% accurate move into the Hatterene, so I absolutely deny the Trick Room there, um, you know, without the 10% chance of missing. But at the same time, he does get a swap there into the Porygon. And I can't Brave Bird again, because Brave Bird Recoil and Life Orb Recoil is going to knock my Zapdos out. And what's he got in the back? Well, we don't know yet, but... Um, there's the uh, there's the Hatterene. So the game's over, isn't it? Because, you know, I can't Aqua Jet now. Azumarill can't, you know, Azumarill doesn't have Taunt or whatever. You know, a play rough isn't going to be knocking out the Porygon too. So I'm, I was so frustrated with myself because I thought, um, I mean, I, okay, let's say I did, get, I did go for the close combat there. Actually, a close combat and a play rough... Would have knocked the Porygon 2 out, I think, wouldn't it? So maybe I, maybe I did kind of throw the game there a bit. But, all right, you know, I can't Aqua Jet. If I've got... Again, I'm really scraping the barrel here. I'm thinking, if I've got any chance to win this game now, I need to make Azumarill a threat. Because Zapdos isn't going to be the one knocking out this Porygon. It's got to be the Azumarill. And we don't know what he's got in the back as well. So, uh, you know, I'm still trying. I'm still playing it out, hopelessly. Um, there's a close combat into uh, the Indeedee, who's very safely and very correctly going for the follow me there. I will survive this uh, life orb recoil, just, on 1 HP. You see my 169, good old optimally, um, ev Zapdos for the life orb there. <laughs> but, okay, it's getting the trick room up. 
My zoom roll is at least a threat now. My zoom roll is a threat now. Let's see what he's got in the back there. Because in the last game he had the um, the Glastria. And if it's Glastria here, then, well, I mean, we're still not looking brilliant, are we? But Glastria, Glast Glastria can't one-shot Azumarill. He has to double into the Azumarill to knock it out, doesn't he? Yeah, this whole this whole stream is is pre-recorded. I'm live, obviously. Um, this is my Players Cup uh, four run from yesterday. Uh, I recorded it live, but um, I'm post post commentating it today. So I'm thinking, all right, if I've got any chance here, like I mean, the game is over, isn't it? But if I've got any chance here, then I can maybe double protect on this first turn of Trick Room. Maybe hope for some more double protect. I don't know. Um, I was actually a little bit worried about like how can he how can he capitalize on me going for a double a double protect here? He recovers the Porygon two. He's not going to recover the Porygon two here. What is he? Because he needs to attack to to be a threat. But now have now now I have double detected. He has a he's got high horsepower. He has a ninety five percent win condition here. He just has to high horsepower. And I th I'm not sure, actually. Do, do, do you think a high horsepower try attack knocks out the Azumarill? Because I have got Life Orb on my, on my Zapdos. I'm going to knock myself out to recoil, aren't I? So I just throw some attacks out. High horsepower. Ooh, maybe I will survive a try attack. And he try attacks into my Zapdos. I suppose if he didn't... Well, if he didn't, then I'd knock myself... I'd knock out one of his Pokemon... But I would knock him out to recoil, wouldn't I? So, okay. There's still two turns of Trick Room left. I am in high horsepower range. Like, he he threw that by attacking into my Zapdos. But, still. There's two turns of Trick Room. So, of course I'm going to protect here. He hasn't got anything. You know, he doesn't have a substitute or whatever. There's no way that he can take advantage of this. And I'm thinking, okay, if there's any chance I can win this game, I need a double protect or a high horsepower miss. If I attack here, I've only got a 5% chance of winning. If I try and double protect here, I've got a 30% plus a 5% chance of winning. Wow. I got the double protect. And now we're out of Trick Room. I, I'm still not sure about this, but I need to hope this play rough. Plus six knocks out this Glastria. We've hit it. <laughs> We've knocked it out. <laughs> Can you believe that? Can you believe that set? Can you believe that set? Oh, man, there's so many things that happened. So many things that happened in that set. The, the stars aligned for us to win that set. That... That <laughs> that was an auto loss. That matchup is an absolute auto loss. Thank you very much for following there. Hey, all Satan, thanks. That was <laughs> that was such an auto loss of a game, and I won it 2-0. That was ridiculous. That was absolutely ridiculous. Um, wow. I mean, let's just take a moment to. Uh, to hail the Azumarill there. Can you believe that? That was absolute oh man, I, I, I'm... This is the first time I'm watching these games back. That was ridiculous. I mean, not only getting the double protect, the first double protect with, with, was with confusion as well, but also the turn that the Colossal hit itself in confusion. Because if Colossal didn't hit itself in confusion there and protect it, um, I wouldn't have the same pressure on his team as I would with the Azumarill and Zapdos. And then, like, I, I, I kind of threw the game because I could have just gone for a close combat into the Indeedee and the play rough into the Hatterene. I did risk the 10% chance of missing the player off. Um, but that covered any kind of play of swapping the Indeedee out to get his psychic terrain back up again, which makes so much sense for him to do, so I don't know why I didn't think about it. Um, if I did go for the close combat there and he'd brought the Porygon 2 in, it would have done a lot of damage. Um, would have knocked the... Um, the the uh, Hatterene out next turn he would have probably brought in the um, 
<sighs> brought in the Ndidi again, I would have knocked that out with the close combat, but because of the previous close combat play, Ruff would have knocked out the Porygon 2 as well, and I would have just won the game, because then I think I still... Did, did, ooh, did I have two... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did I have two more Life Orb hits in me with my Zapdos? Because that scenario is too... Hmm. I'm not sure. But either way, um, because we got, you know... There was no way for me to stop that second Trick Room. I knew I had to get a Zoom Roll a threat. I had to make it a threat. And uh, and he threw the game there by not just doubling into the Azum roll. If I would have survived, I mean, it, it, I might have actually survived the tri attack there because he didn't he didn't get a uh, a special attack boost thanks to uh, you know both my Pokemon there have got a higher special defense and I do the defense stat, so his download didn't work out for him there. I think I maybe would have survived a, a tri attack, but I think his only hope was to knock out just double into the uh, into the Azum roll there because if he doubles into it, if he knocks me out. Um, Zapdos is knocking itself out to the recoil there as well and he wins the game so um, yeah that was an absolutely crazy set and I, I, I really have not played a crazy set like that for a very long time that was mad absolutely mad Azumarill was the M the MVP there yes the mo most valuable player <sighs> yeah exactly yeah hit through the confusion hit 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 the player up in that second game and got those two double protect as well too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my bad for bringing a team that's, uh, you know, weak to uh, weak to that indeed he had to lead. But uh, I, I really, I genuinely could not believe that game. So there we go. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next round.